Good morning and welcome to our class this morning. It's family day in Ontario, so happy family day. I hope you're with loved ones or at least finding lots of self-love today if that's where things are at for you. Our theme this week is around change and um, change is one of those things that's, well, it's constant. There's always change. And um, one of the things that the Yoga Sutras tells us that one of the biggest sources for our misery is confusing that which changes, which is basically everything in the material world, um, confusing that with that which doesn't change, which is the spiritual world. So in the spiritual world, there's, um, you know, sort of pure essence of being where nothing changes. We don't live in that world, though. We live in a world that changes and is constantly in flux. And we can either roll with those changes or we can fight them and be miserable. And one of the things yoga teaches us is to break up our habits a little bit, do things a little bit differently, um, to try not to get so stuck in that realm of not wanting things to change, wanting things to be as they are. And then the other aspect that I want to look at today is the idea that, I just realized my computer's not plugged in and it's going to die, so I'm just going to do that. Well, I collect my thoughts here. There we go. Um, so the other aspect is to remember that this material world is not all that who we are. And when we get overwhelmed by change or there's a lot of chaos going around us and we feel out of our depth, sometimes it's helpful to remember that we're not just part of this material world. We're also part of the spiritual world, the unchanging and if we can connect even just a little bit with that unchanging being, sometimes called spirit, God, if you will, um, when, we can, when we can connect with that, um, we feel that there's a little bit more space. So today we're going to use our breath and some visualization to try to create that feeling and sense of space. So. All right, so the recording is going and all is well. I will see you on the mat. We're going to start seated today with a bit of seated meditation. So um, you can get yourself comfortable, sit on a cushion or even a chair or your couch. See my comfortable couch in the background there. I'm gonna sit on the floor. So I'll see you on the mat. I've tried to block the sun behind me, but it's quite bright this morning and I've covered the window, but it still may be hopefully not too bad to see me with the light behind. So as you come to sit, find a nice comfortable position. And the main thing is not how your legs are. I'm sitting cross-legged because that's comfortable for me, but if that's not comfortable for you, then choose another position. So. Um, you could have your legs stretched out in front of you, or you could have your feet on the ground, knees up. The main thing here is you want to try to have the spine fairly long and neutral. So by neutral, generally that means we're not collapsing and rounding forward. In it, with a neutral spine, the lower back comes in a little bit. So try to find that nice length of spine without tension ideally. So the body's relaxed. The hands can rest on the lap or on the knees wherever they're comfortable. And then you can close your eyes if you like or if you prefer to keep them open you might just gaze down towards the floor in front of you and soften your gaze so that you're ideally not distracted too much. So as we start to tune in and find a little bit of space within the world that's constantly changing around us, we can use the breath as a metaphor for finding that space. 
So within each breath and the movement of the breath, there is a little bit of space. So at the end of each inhalation, there's a natural pause, just a split second. And then after the exhalation, there's also a split second natural pause. So let's take a minute or two and see if we can tune into that space in the breath. So quietly breathing. And your only focus or task here is to notice the spaces between your breaths. And if you don't notice them naturally, you could, <clears throat> excuse me, deliberately <clears throat> lengthen those spaces a little bit by holding the breath per se, but by just creating a little more pause, a little more space. If you find your mind wandering, come back to your breath for a few more breaths. And then let go of the attention on the spaces between the breaths and simply take a few normal, relaxed breaths. Then we'll work on a visualization of finding kind of a still point inside. And we're going to use um, from yoga philosophy the idea of what's called shashumna, or a central channel that lines up from the crown of the head and imagine it's imaginary channel, doesn't actually exist. And it runs down along the length of the body, just in front of the spine. If you can imagine the exact center of your body, front to back, side to side. So top of the head and this channel or line, like a plumb line, comes down through the body all the way to the pelvic floor, to the base of the spine. You can imagine that as a hollow tube or as a plumb line or whatever works for you. And there's the idea of the chakras, which are energy centers that would line up along this central channel. But for, for today, we're only going to focus on this central channel. And the idea that within the center of us, there is this quiet, still center. And that we can access that quietness, that stillness, you know, over time through practice. So of course, at first, if things are crazy around us and we're overwhelmed, it's going to be very difficult to access that still, calm center. However, if we practice this little bit by little bit, when we're in a calm space, we may have more access to that calm center when things are flying around us. So again, if you'd like, you can close your eyes and find length in your spine. Imagine your hips, shoulders, and head as building blocks. And they sit right on top of one another. So many people have their head forward and that's made worse by computers and cell phones, so maybe drawing the chin down and back a little bit and finding that alignment through the body. See if you can imagine that still center from the crown of the head to the base of the spine. You might imagine as you breathe that you are elongating that channel, 
Letting your sit bones sink down and the crown of your head lift towards the ceiling. And then imagine that that line or channel is flexible. And we're going to move in a kind of a cat-cow movement with the spine here. Just testing the flexibility of that channel. So take a breath in, draw the shoulders down and back, let the chest lift. And then as you exhale, round the back, bring the chin down. If you've had your legs crossed and you want to stretch them out, go ahead. A couple more movements like this, starting to give the spine a little bit of movement. Okay. And then as you come back to center, come back to this idea of visualizing a central channel in the body. And we're going to twist around that center. So if you take your hands and bring them one over the other, over your heart, and that's just to keep the hands out of the way as we twist. So we're really using this, the core to do the twist, not any leverage with the hands. So as you turn to one side, imagine that that central channel stays fairly stationary. You're letting your body twist around that channel or shashumna in Sanskrit. Don't worry about how you're breathing, but do keep breathing as you gently twist. Right, and then come back to the center. Release your hands. And if your legs are crossed, I invite you to stretch them out Maybe give them a little shake, wake them up, and then cross them the other way, the way that you normally wouldn't cross your legs. And it probably feels really awkward. It certainly feels awkward. So just kind of getting used to some change, not getting so stuck in our ways. And most people, when they come into a yoga class, take the exact same spot, as long as it's available every single time. We are creatures of habit, and that can be super helpful, right? We don't need to make decisions constantly about how we are going to do things because we're on autopilot a lot of the times. But it can also be unhelpful when we get sort of stuck in our ways and set. And I think that gets a little worse as we get older. So with your legs crossed the opposite way, come back to cat-cow. Inhaling, lengthening in extension. Exhale, lengthening in flexion. After your next exhalation, come back to a neutral spine. And we're going to transition to lie down. We'll do a few leg stretches lying down. And as we uh, come to stands later, we'll be working a little bit on, on balance. So we want to make sure the legs are feeling really strong and um, open. So you can come to lie down on your mat. And as you get there, take a moment to come back to your breath. So any position that's comfortable, arms can be on the floor or on your body. And tune back into your breath and this idea of a little bit of space. Space between the inhale and the exhale, and then space between the exhale and the inhale. And then when you're ready to move, you can bring your knees in towards your chest. And we'll do the same breath pattern with the posture apanasana, or the movement. So as you inhale, let the knees move away by straightening your arms. And notice the space. 
exaggerate it a little if that's comfortable, and then bring the knees in toward the chest, and again, notice the space, exaggerate it by holding or pausing with the breath a little bit longer if that's comfortable, and then away again. So moving mindfully with the breath, observing those pauses, noticing the stillness, built into the movement of the breath. Next time your knees come in towards your chest, you can leave them there and transfer both of your hands over to your right knee or if you prefer holding on behind the thigh, that's fine. And we'll stretch the left leg toward the ceiling and do a few circles with the left ankle. If you're finding there's a lot of stretch in the back of the leg, you can bend the leg a little or even all the way as you circle the ankle, or if your leg gets tired. Circle both directions and then try changing it up. Make a different shape. Maybe write your name with your toes or do some figure eights or zigzag or diagonal from one corner to the other. Play and create some change here. So we're not always just doing things the same way every single time. And then press your heel up toward the ceiling. Feel your stomach muscles engage and draw your lower back firmly towards the ground and we'll slowly lower that left leg toward the floor. Really important to keep your neck, your face, your jaw, your shoulders relaxed. Use your core and when your leg gets just above the ground, if you like, you can hover there and feel your abdominal muscles, maybe the hip flexors in the front of the hip working. And then slowly let your heel come to the ground, but keep that leg active. Keep your heel pressing down, toes pointing toward the ceiling. Gently squeeze the right knee in. And then we'll keep the right hand on the knee and let the left hand come away. And we'll make some shapes or with the right knee. So again, you could start with circles if you like and then vary the shape. Try to get into all the little places that you could move here into that hip joint. And then let's bring the knee back into the chest again, holding on with both hands, using the strength of your core and keeping the neck, shoulders, face relaxed. Slowly lift that leg back up. And then when your foot is pointing at the ceiling again, you can relax your foot, bend your knee, and bring both knees to chest. And let's repeat that in and out movement a few times. Inhaling, pause, knees away. Exhaling, pause, both knees come in. And then next time you find your knees in at your chest, pause there again and transfer both hands over to the left knee, either again over the knee or if your knee isn't happy to flex that much, you can bring your hands behind and give a little space to the knee. And then you'll stretch the right leg toward the ceiling and again, bend a little or a lot if you find that there's an uncomfortable stretch in the back of the leg. And then you can start with circles and then start to vary the shape and the direction as you move your ankle. Try to get into all those little spots. And then with the foot flexed and hugging the left knee in, engage the abdominal muscles, lower back drawing toward the ground, and take your time keeping your shoulders, neck, face relaxed as you slowly lower that leg. Keep breathing. Don't hold your breath as you lower. Again, optional, you can hover the heel above the ground 
And at the same time, keeping the core engaged and maybe even imagining you're drawing your whole right leg up towards your right hip. It's really engaging. And then when you're ready, you can slowly lower the foot to the floor, keeping that leg engaged, toes pointing up, kneecap drawing up towards the thigh, squeezing the left knee in for a moment. And then when you're ready, you can start to do some movement with that left side. You can start with circles and then vary the shape. Create some change. Don't do things always the way that you always do. And there's nothing wrong with doing things the same way. But we can get stuck in a rut and it's good to vary things, even simple things. And then coming back to the center again, bringing both hands around the knee, squeezing the abdominal muscles in toward the center, lower back close to the ground, flexing that right foot again, or still, and slowly lifting the leg back up. Take your time. And then bend both knees again, hands onto the knees, and... A few more rounds of Apanasana, moving the knees in and out, coming back to the breath, back to that idea that there is space between each phase of the breath, and we're simply honoring and recognizing that space as we breathe and move. Let's bring the feet to the floor. So for the next one, we'll work with bridge pose. And again, it's about strengthening the legs and working with the core, and in, in this case, the glutes a little bit as well. So you can leave your arms relaxed on the ground. If you like to do the version of bridge where you bring the hands underneath you and draw the shoulders under, you're welcome to do that. And I'm going to demonstrate the simple version, just keeping the arms relaxed. So let's start with a breath in, feet underneath the knees, exhale, press into the feet, feel the lower back move toward the ground. And then you can start to lift and lower with your breath, or you can simply lift and lower at a pace that's comfortable and breathe normally. So if you're coordinating breath, inhale as you lift, exhale as you lower. Move at your own pace, your own breath rhythm. And if your breath is shorter and you find you're moving faster than you want, you might take two breaths or simply breathe and move freely here. Try to keep your feet planted on the ground, legs strong, knees, thighs parallel to one another. And then you have the option to stay, and we're going to stay for a little while. So if you find that you're starting to strain and you need to come down from the pose, please do that at any time. You can take a break and come back up, or you can just be done when your body says that's enough. So lifting high enough to feel the glutes, feel the thighs, front and back of the thighs working, but try to keep your upper body relaxed and free. So jaw, face, shoulders, and neck are soft while the legs are doing the work from the hips right down to the feet. Feel your feet planted. Feel the strength in your legs. If you feel like you'd like to challenge yourself, and this is totally optional, you could bring your weight onto one foot and invite the other knee in toward your body and then stretch that leg up. Try to keep your face, neck, and shoulders relaxed. And if you did one side, you might want to even things up by doing the other side. If you find that you're really tensing in your upper body, you may want to skip this. And then when you're ready, bringing the foot down. If you're still in the pose, lift for another couple of breaths. Find that strong engagement through the hips 
through the legs and then slowly lower down and relax for a moment. We'll add a gentle twist here so you can keep everything more or less in the same position, arms out to the sides, feet about hip distance apart and letting the knees come down to one side, turning the head the opposite way and back to the center. If you like, you can come back to the image of the shashumna or central channel in the body and imagine that you're, again, twisting around that still point. One or two more here. If you'd like to stay for a couple of breaths in the twist each side, you can certainly do that or keep moving dynamically. And then as you're ready, bring your knees back towards your, or back towards the center, pointing at the ceiling. And then once more, we'll bring the knees in towards the chest. And for this one, you can stretch both legs toward the ceiling. The arms could either reach toward the floor behind you or you know, wherever they comfortably reach in that direction or if it's more comfortable for you out to the sides. So from that position, back, knees to chest. Urdva Prasrita Padasana, or UPP for short. So we'll do a few rounds here. While you're doing this, if you like, you can observe the pauses between your breaths as a way of keeping the mind focused and reminding us that there's still points in all movement. And the next time you bring your knees to your chest, you can keep them there and do any movement that you like. So you could rock a little, you could circle, but I invite you to vary it a little bit do something different than you would normally do. You know, maybe draw your name with your knees or do some figure eights. Maybe take the knees apart, and circle them around and back together. So vary the movement and try to find something a little different than what you might normally do here. Or maybe you want to stretch the legs and give them a shake. You can go ahead and do that. And then whenever you feel complete with that movement, bring your feet back to the floor. Take a moment to pause and check in. So we laid down maybe 10 minutes ago, I'm guessing. And we had a moment to check in then. So notice if anything has changed with your body, with your breath, with your mind in those few minutes since we first laid down. And then when you're ready, I'm going to invite you to roll to your side to come upright. However, I'm going to suggest that you try rolling to the side that you normally would not roll to. So again, creating just a little bit of change in those habits. If you don't have a preference, just pick a side, going whichever direction maybe feels a little bit less normal. So finding your way upright. And let's come to all fours. So you can swing right around. If your knees don't allow you to be on all fours comfortably um, and a blanket under your knees isn't helpful, you can do the cat-cow seated again as we did earlier. So inhaling, arching, exhaling, rounding, or you could round and move to child's pose if you prefer. And a few rounds like this, either seated or all fours, either cat-cow or all fours to child's pose. 
Normally I would lower my head a little more if you're watching me, but I've got this microphone I'm trying to um, keep in place. So if you're doing the pose, you might bring your head even right to the ground if you're in child's pose. If you like child's pose, rest there for a few breaths. If not, keep moving, or you could come to puppy where the knees are under the hips and the elbows on the ground, and that's a, a good choice if having fully flexed knees with your weight on your knees isn't comfortable for you. So a couple of breaths, whatever position you've chosen. And then when you're ready, if coming to kneeling works for you or you can, uh, we're going to come to stand so you can get there however you want. And I'm going to offer a little bit of a challenge this morning. See if you can stand up using no hands or maybe just one hand on the ground to help you. So however you want to do that, if you want to do it from uh, seated with your bum on the ground, if you want to do it from kneeling, um, whatever works. If you need to use a hand to help yourself, please do. Otherwise, coming up to stand in whatever way is helpful for you. I'm seeing I'm I've got that light behind me, so I'll try to stay out of it so you can see me. So coming to Tadasana or mountain pose, you might rock back and forth a little bit, coming onto the balls of your feet, coming onto the heels, just seeing how your legs feel and how your balance is. Are you really wobbly today? Or are you finding some stillness in the movement, some ease? Right. And then as you come back to center, let your toes be spread out on the mat. And we'll shift the weight from one side to the other side, feeling the foot that's taking the weight, feeling it spread and sink down, and then other side. And then as you rock side to side, you might lift the heel or even lift the whole foot off the ground. Check in with how that feels. Again, do you feel wobbly? Is it sort of a little off kilter today? Or do you feel calm and centered? And please don't judge. Some days balance can be quite challenging. And if you find that balance is challenging for you today, you might move near a wall and use the wall for support. Let's take the feet a little bit wider now. And you can bring your hands onto your hips if you like, and we'll do a few rotations for the hips. So again, you can do circles as we normally do, but I encourage you to kind of change it up. Maybe go back and forth or figure eights. Let your knees be soft and let your body move. So find movement throughout as you do this. All right, and then when you come back to the center, you can let the arms come down, maybe bring the feet in slightly closer and we'll roll the shoulders. So lift them up, draw them back, feel the shoulder blades come towards each other and then down. So again, lifting, circling, back and down. And then let's vary it up by rolling one shoulder and then the other shoulder. Again, you can let the head go a little bit, let the hips swing, let the body twist. So one of the really important things when working with balance is that we're not rigid. Right, so all of these circular movements is about finding fluidity in the body. So let's try coming to balance on one foot. And you can keep the toes on the ground if you like. And we'll shift the weight to one foot and find your balance there. And then let your body move. See how far you can go away from the center without losing your balance. And of course, if you do lose your balance, that's all part of the fun. So you can just bring your foot down and try again. Keep going. 
So what can you do here without losing your balance? And then when you're done with that side, give yourself a little shake. So let go of the tension of the standing leg there. You might bend and straighten the knees a couple of times. And then move to the other side. So again, coming, you can keep the toes on the ground if you find that that's helpful, or you can lift the foot. And then you know, maybe the toe touches down as you need it, or the leg stays in the air, and we explore finding our balance while moving. really use the space around you. If you lose your balance, no problem. Right? That's part of the fun. It's all just part of learning is losing balance and then finding it again. So let's come back to Tadasana Mountain Pose. And we're going to put together some poses in a sequence, a couple of balance poses along with warrior. If you have blocks and you find it helpful to use them to bring your hands towards the floor when you come to warrior, you can use your blocks near the front of the mat. And if you find that you know, you're comfortable bringing your hands right to the floor or to your leg, then you can skip the blocks. So what you'll do now is you'll orient yourself towards the front of your mat. And if you have blocks and you want to use them, you can bring them to the sides of your mat, just on the inside, so they're about shoulder distance apart. And then you'll stand near your blocks. So we're going to build this movement bit by bit. So starting with the breath in, raise your arms up. Let the heart lift a little bit. And then as you exhale, Bring the arms down. And for now, let's lower the head with the exhale. Give a little stretch to the neck. So inhale, lifting. Exhale, arms down. Chin slightly forward. We'll do two more like that. And then next time you come with your arms down to your sides, pause there and find that plumb line here in mountain pose. It's the idea that there's a channel from the crown of the head to the base of the spine, and that the body elongates and aligns up along that channel. Feel the weight of your feet on the ground. Put a little pressure into your heels. Feel the thighs draw up. But remember when you balance, not to be rigid. So you can even keep a bit of bend in the standing leg to help um, with the fluidity. The so balance is always moving. Right? We're never perfectly still in balance, but we want to find that feeling of ease or stillness within. But know that the body's going to shift and move. That's just part of the, the deal with balance. It's part of the deal with being human, actually. Everything is, things are moving all the time. Well, let's take a breath in, and as we reach the arms up overhead, we're going to shift the weight to the right foot, or sorry, left foot, and then bring the right knee in toward the chest. Bring the foot down, inhale, lift your arms up, and we'll shift sides. So for you, it might be bringing the knee right up into the chest, then bringing the foot down as the arms come up. Or you might keep your toes on the ground and simply bend the knee and bring the hands to the thigh. Inhale, arms up, legs straight. Exhale, one knee coming in. Do one more on each side. Again, if you're finding balance to be tricky or challenging on one side or both sides, see if you can maintain an attitude of lightness about that today, knowing that things are always changing. Next time the arms come up, let them come down to your sides. So one day balance might be easier, the next day it might be more challenging. If things don't stay the same. So engage with lightness and compassion as much as possible. So now we're going to add warrior to this 
uh, posture sequence. So taking a breath in, arms up, shifting the weight to the left foot, right knee comes in, any amount, and then step back, again, any amount, turning your right foot out, toes to the right, lifting the arms, coming to warrior one. Pause here and find your balance. So if you feel a little wobbly, you might look down at your feet, and if your feet are in a straight line, you might take your right foot a little bit more to the right. See if that helps with stability. And then from there, we'll add a forward bend. So coming forward, maybe the hands come to the thigh, or if you have them, to your blocks, or if it's available to you, reaching for the floor. As you come up, Knee bends over the ankle in front, back leg can stay straight. And as you go forward, if you choose, you could move the front leg a little bit straighter. Try not to lock it, especially if you're bringing your hands to your thigh. So a few more like that. Inhaling to lift, exhaling, coming forward. Right. Next time you're upright, instead of coming forward, we're going to step onto the front foot, take as many breaths here as you need, bring the knee in toward the chest, any amount, release the foot to the floor as you raise the arms up, breathe in here, and then exhale to release. So we'll work with warrior on the other side now. So taking a breath in, reach up. As you exhale, bring your left knee in. Again, any amount that suits you. Step back and turn your toes towards the left. You want to have your whole foot on the ground. And again, take a moment to check on your stability. If you feel a bit wobbly, taking the feet wider side to side on your mat um, is helpful. And also closer front to back is more stable. So if you want to work a little harder today and you want to challenge yourself more, take your back foot further back and have your feet more lined up in a line. So maybe your heel lines up with the back heel. And then from there, wherever you're at, inhaling, bending the front knee, lifting into warrior one, and then maybe moving the front leg straighter, coming forward any amount in the forward bend. So coming up. Breathing in, if you're following the breath, exhale, go forward. And if you're comfortable with this pose and it feels easy for you, you might also add another ball to juggle, which is to notice the pauses between each inhale and each exhale. Right, next time you're heading upright, we're going to stay there. Now, if you've stepped your feet a little further back as I have, this next part gets a little trickier. So you might want to adjust your feet a bit or challenge yourself. We're going to step onto the front foot, lift the knee in toward the chest, bring the hands to the knee, release the foot down, lift the arms up, breathing in and then exhale to release. Wonderful. So again, we're going to add on to this sequence, and we're going to add on a posture um, some of you will be familiar with called Warrior Three. I'd like to show you Warrior Three first and give you a couple of options so that I don't have to stop in the middle of the sequence and outline that all to you, for you. So when we get to Warrior One, instead of doing the forward bend version that we just did, we're going to come into warrior three. We'll take the arms down, shoulder height or lower. You'll step onto the front foot and you'll lift the back leg at the same time lifting your chest. You can draw the arms back a little bit so you're really engaging the back body. Right? So this is a simple version of warrior three and then we step back to warrior one. So we'll do that the first time around and then I'll demonstrate the other option that you could do both times or the, the second time or not at all. And I'll do it on the other side, just for my own balance sake. Stepping back, warrior one. 
And if you want to go into a sort of more um, ex extreme isn't really the word, but a bigger version of warrior three, as you step onto your front foot and lift the back leg, lift the chest, keep that sense of lifting as you hinge forward at your hip joint, coming so that the body and leg are roughly parallel to the ground. Keep that sense of lifting through the chest, through the leg, and then we'd step back to warrior one. Okay, so either version. You can certainly keep your back toes on the ground if balance isn't coming easily to you today. And do that with a light heart, not with a feeling that you're, you're not good enough. Right? So you are absolutely good enough. And when you can really honor that and be with your body as it is, there's so much that opens up. So exhale, feel your heels sink down, thighs draw up. We'll take a breath in, reach the arms overhead. Exhaling, right knee comes in toward the body any amount. Step back, again, any amount. Coming to warrior one, let's pause in warrior one for a moment and feel the strength of the legs, the stability with both feet on the ground. When you feel ready, you can lower the arms, shoulder height or lower. Step onto your front foot, lift the chest, draw the shoulders back, and maybe lift the leg. It's a straight leg behind you. You want to feel the hamstrings, the glutes, the lower back, the upper back. The whole back chain of muscles of your body are engaged here. When you're ready, step back, warrior one. Find your stability there for a moment. Shoulders relax. You can bend your arms if that's helpful. And then from here, we'll step onto the front foot. Knee comes in toward the chest. And then foot comes down as you reach up, breathing in. Exhaling, arms come down. So we'll try the other side. Breathing in, lifting up. Exhale, left knee in. Inhale, step back. Warrior one and find strength and stability here in this pose. Bring the arms to the sides to give a little more ease. And then step onto your front foot. Maybe lift the back toes, maybe keep them on the ground as you draw the shoulders down and back. Lift that leg straight or again, toes on the ground. And breathe. When you're ready, step back, warrior one. And then step forward, bringing your knee in toward your body. And then foot down, arms lift. Breathing in, exhaling to release. Good, so we'll do that sequence once more on each side. You have the option of going into that flatter version of warrior three. And for those of you who really want to work a bit more today, instead of lowering the arms for warrior three, you could keep them up over your head, which adds a considerable challenge to the pose. So as works for you today, and feel free to vary it or change it if you find that what you've tried isn't actually working the way you thought it would. So again, exhale, feel your feet sink down. And then when you're ready, inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, right knee comes in. Stepping back, warrior one. Inhale as you lift the arms, then pause here to find your stability. So if you're keeping the arms up, you can just leave them where they are. If you want to bring them down lower for more ease, you can do that. Stepping onto the front foot. Maybe lifting the back leg, maybe keeping the toes on the ground. And then if you want to go further, you can let the body hinge at your hip. Keep a sense of lifting, shoulders drawing down and back, leg lifting, chest lifting. When you're ready, step back, warrior one. Find your stability there. And then step forward, bringing the knee in toward the body. Foot comes down, arms lift up, breathe in. 
and then exhale to release. Feel both feet on the ground. Find that still point, whether it's with the breath or with that central channel we've been envisioning. Feel grounded as much as possible as we head into our last series here, warrior one to three. Breathing in, taking the arms up. Exhaling, knee coming in toward the body. Step back as you inhale, coming to warrior one and find your balance there. Shoulders relax, chest lifting. So again, you can leave the arms overhead if you're doing that version or down, shoulder height or lower. Stepping onto your front foot maybe lifting the back leg, and then maybe shifting forward at the hip. Breathing wherever you are. And then again, when you're ready, step back to warrior one. Find your center, your gravity here. And then step onto your front foot. Bring your knee up in towards your chest. Release the foot down, lift the arms up. Big breath in, exhale and release. And again, feel both feet on the ground, feet roughly parallel to one another and about hip distance apart. And for some people, it's a little more comfortable to have the feet slightly turned out, that's okay. And then let's do a few forward bends to release the back after warrior, Warriors 1 and 3, which are a good strengthener for the back. So I'm going to stretch out those muscles now. Taking a breath in, lifting up, exhale, come forward. Any amount could be hands or forearms to your thighs or reaching right down toward the ground. Try to let your head relax forward. And then inhale, lifting up. Exhale forward. Do a few more at your own pace. And then if you like, you can stay in that forward bend for a few breaths. So you could take your forearms onto your thighs here. You could let the body drape over your legs and let the head hang down. Whatever's comfortable for you. And then when you feel ready, you can either come upright to organize yourself to come back to sit for a moment or from your forward bend, if it's available to you, you could bend your knees, come into a squat, and then from there, find your seat. That's a little, little trickier way to get down. So however you want to get there is absolutely fine. And when you come to a seated position, and if you want to use a blanket or a cushion or even a chair, you can do that. We're not going to stay seated very long, just a couple of minutes to check in, and then we'll come to Shavasana to end today. So as you come to sit, you might also try, again, crossing your legs the opposite way. And whatever arrangement works for you, so you can have one leg on top of the other or one foot in front of the other. And then bring your palms together, interlace your fingers, and then notice which index finger is forward. And then we're going to uncross and switch so the other index finger is forward and the thumbs cross the other way. So a little bit of a, a difference in the legs, difference in the hands. And then let the, keep the fingers interlaced, but let the palms come apart, and you can let the Hands rest down in your lap, palms up, fingers interlaced. This is a kind of mudra. Mudra just means symbol or seal. Uh, the most common mudra is, you know, this one where the thumb and finger are, 
are um, touching, which symbolizes sort of a circuit of energy or unity. And again, we're, we're creating sort of a circuit of energy with the hands in this way and switching things up by having the hands in a different position. So either close your eyes or soften your gaze and we'll take you know, a minute maybe and simply come back to the breath and back to if you're comfortable with it and it works for you, the image of a central channel helping your body to stay long and aligned. When you feel ready, you can shift positions to come to lie down. If you prefer to sit for Shavasana, that's absolutely fine. Um, if you want to lie down, you can do that now. We just have about five minutes or so left together. So as you come to lie down, let your body settle. If you need to cover up to be warm enough, please do. It's not very relaxing if you're chilly. And even though the sun is bright today, it's quite cold, at least here where I am. Let the breath go now. Exhale and feel yourself sink down into the earth a little bit more. We worked a little bit today with the core, the abdominal muscles, the lower back, the glutes, and the legs particularly. So bring your awareness to the area around the pelvis, the center of your body, and see if you can find a little more weight in your pelvis. Feel a sense of dropping into the earth through the sacrum, through the back of the hips, or if you happen to be sitting, through the sit bones. Feel the thighs soften. Let the kneecaps drop away from the thighs now. Relax your calves, your shins, ankles, and feet. Feel that from the waist down, the body sinks a little lower, a little more deeply into the earth. And then moving up from the waist, feel the rib cage heavy on the ground. Feel that gentle rise and fall of the breath. And feeling that rhythm. Finding as much ease as possible with your breath. Let your shoulders sink down. Feel the space between the shoulder blades easeful. And feel the collarbones widen as the shoulders drop down, the upper arms, elbows, lower arms relaxing, and softening the wrists and hands. Exhaling, let the shoulders and arms go a little bit more. Soften the neck and the jaw. And relax the muscles around your mouth, across the bridge of your nose, between your eyebrows, across your forehead. 
and feel the skin of your scalp release and relax. And as you rest, I'd like to share a short chant with you. This is a chant that is meant to ease transitions. So transitions are times of change and often when we feel most off our center and disrupted. So as you rest in this hopefully place of ease and calm, feeling yourself absorbing perhaps the meaning and the words of the chant to find ease as you move th through life, ease in transitions. Om Gananantva Ganapati Gunghava Mahe Kavin Kavina Mupamashravastamam Jeshtarajam Brahmanam Brahmanaspata Anashrin Banutibis Sida Sadanam Shri Maha Ganapataye Namaha Come back to your breath now. Let the breath get a little bit deeper if that's comfortable for you. And come back to observing the spaces in the breath. And as you start to prepare for your day or if you're watching this later at another time for whatever comes next, take with you this idea of space, of finding stillness, of remembering your true self, which is not only the material self, but also the spiritual self, that part that doesn't change, that can be accessed through stillness and attention. So you can stay lying down if you like, or if you're ready to move on with your day, you might come back to seated. You can certainly carry on with your Shavasana after we're done. But for those of you who are upright and ready to continue, bring your palms together. Namaste. So as we go into this transition from yoga to whatever comes next, notice how that feels in your system. You know, can you access a little bit of that calmness and stillness that we've been working on today? And I invite you to carry that with you through the day, taking your yoga off your mat. Have a great day.